Hello everyone. Welcome back once again. I am Nicodemus Kane. Today is February the 21st of 2022. That means that it is 2-21-22. Uh, we can talk about tomorrow. A lot of people are putting it out into the world that something might happen tomorrow. <clears throat> I'm I'm not so concerned about uh, 222. I am more concerned about 223, the day after. So be wary of everything. That's what I'm going to say because you just don't know what these tyrants in control have in store for us. So just be careful. Um, today, I'm going to read Psalm 112. Um, there's no note or anything to this. But we're going to go through that, and I'm going to talk about some stuff that happened this weekend, if we have time. But you never know. Just sometimes I go long on these psalms. If I go long on these psalms, then that's just the, that's just the Father telling me that I don't need to talk about my weekend. <laughs> so that is what it is. Okay. I'm following along if you feel like it. This is Psalm 112. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious, and full of compassion, and righteous. A good man showeth favor, and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Um, <clears throat> we've heard a lot of this before. Nothing immediately stands out to me, um, but we will go through it again just to see if we can pick something out of it. I'm, I'm sure that, again, other people may read this and may be able to pull something out of it and say this is a reference for me but not everyone it's uh, depends on how the father is speaking to you what he wants you to hear I, I I have come to some kind of understanding that when you when you need certain understanding and teaching from God to further your walk in this world, he will give it to you. He will find something, some way that you need in order to be able to, um, <clears throat> in order to be able to, uh, gain that knowledge and I could read this psalm today the way it is and I may not find something in it that really really touches me but in two weeks I can come back to this and reread it and it may be the one thing I needed to hear my entire life so maybe today it's just not for me but for somebody else out there, it could be 
it could be that thing that pulls them off the ledge. You, you just never know. So just because I say, you know, I don't see much in it today, it does not mean that there's nothing in it. I have always said anyways that you need to find this out for yourself. Find this information out for yourself. Go look it up yourself. Read it yourself. Pray for yourself. Don't pray for me to find it. Pray for other people to find it. But not pray for other people. <laughs> you hear me? Don't pray for me to find it. Pray for yourself to find it. Then you can pass it to other people. And if they can pull something out of it, then they are blessed from it. I guess that's what I was trying to say. <clears throat> I was trying to I'm trying to wipe my nose there because it uh, it started running a little bit. Because it is a Monday, and man, we had a weekend. I'll tell you what. So let's go back through this, and then uh, yes, we will definitely talk about my weekend. Uh, I I gotta get some stuff off my chest. I'll tell you this much right now. All right, starting at the top. Praise ye the Lord, every day, every way, everywhere. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. That delighteth greatly in his commandments. If the commandments were done away with, then what do we have to delight greatly in? Other than Christ. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. If the generation of the upright shall be blessed, then the generation of the unrighteous shall be cursed do you feel blessed or cursed right now wealth and riches shall be in his house and he and his righteousness shall his righteousness endureth forever unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness he is gracious and full of compassion and righteous Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. I was in a pretty dark place before the Father came and changed me, changed my heart. And I thanked him today, as a matter of fact. I said, thank you for giving me the opportunity to have a life where I can, I can get to know my granddaughter and my stepdaughter because this weekend was beautiful we had a very very nice weekend this weekend uh, he, he is gracious and full of compassion and righteous a good man showeth favor and lendeth he will guide his affairs with discretion surely he shall not be moved forever the righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. If you trust in the Father, you have nothing to be afraid of. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. When the world is falling apart, you will stand up firm with no fear at all, and you say, God has me in this. This shall not hurt me. This shall not move me. You can beat me, whip me, starve me, do whatever you want to, tax me to death. God will not let me be moved by you. I will stand firm. And yet so many... So many, uh, so many preachers and pastors and people that, people that are just making tons upon tons upon tons of money talking about how they interpret Bible prophecy. They are saying, don't, don't fight over your freedom, but don't worry about fighting over your freedom because God will have you. God will keep you. It's 
subjection to tyrants is fear. <laughs> Do not be afraid. Stand firm in your belief. Stand firm in your righteousness. Stand up to evil. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. He shall not be afraid he, until he see his desire upon his enemies. Hmm. We follow this back, and we are still talking about a good man. A good man showeth favor. He will. Surely he shall not be. He shall not be afraid. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. Are we talking about God here? Are we talking about the good man? In context, we're talking about the good man. His heart is established. The good man's heart is established. The good man shall not be afraid until the good man sees... The good man's desires upon the good man's enemies. So, if you sit back on your hands and listen to authority and do what they say, can your desire push back upon your enemies? If you sit on your hands and do nothing and subject yourself to the will of authority, can your desire, can you see your desire upon your enemies? Will you ever see your desire upon your enemies if you sit on your hands and do nothing? Hmm? Hmm? If you just say, if you just say, oh, you know, <sighs> We don't have to worry about these small things that, you know, God will have us. God will take care of it. Will you ever see your desire? At the end, yeah, God will, God will give you your desire. If you, if you turn to your, if you turn to righteousness, sure. But subjecting yourself to the rule of tyrants is fear. It is not fear of God. It is fear. It is fear of the evil of this world. If you are, if you are standing in your house, at the doorstep of your house, and you have evil men that you know are doing the wrong things, if you have evil men that are standing in front of your house telling you that you need to come out and put these shackles on and be taken away and thrown into a prison cell, And God tells you, no, stand firm, stay in your house. What? What? Who are you following there? If you are afraid of losing everything and being and being taken away are you going to stand up or are you going to you going to give in to it if authority is is at your doorstep telling you that you need to come out of your house come away with them or else they will do something to you what are you going to do are you going to fear for for the safety of your house for your family and go with them and then have them wind up destroying your house and your family anyways taking it all away or are you going to stand firm and say no? 
No, my my God told me to not give in to you, to your evil. You will not move me. You will not take me. This is my freedom. This is my truth. And that if you come to me and hurt me, there is no weapon upon this earth that can hurt me because I have a far, I have a far greater treasure in heaven. Which one of that is is giving in? Which one? Which one of those is giving into your fear? I'm going to stand firm. I'm going to fight for what I have. There is nothing, nothing in this Bible that says you can't fight for what you have. If you have God on your side, you you have no problem. Now, if you're if you're at a point where you have nothing and you've been captured. There are many times where it says, just go with it, but don't ever give in to it. We can go back to the story of Daniel and the lions. Is that right? Where, where he refused to go along with what the king said. King said, everyone will eat this certain thing, and they starved themselves. They said, no, we're not going to do that. Until eventually, God gave them gave them the uh, what was it the ability to to read dreams, and then that was whenever the king said, "Okay, fine, you can have your own food." The authority said, "You are only supposed to worship a certain god in a certain way." Daniel said, "No," and he got caught praying to praying to the Father, praying to the Most High. And then he got, he got thrown to the lions. God saved him. That's rebellious. That's rebellion. That's that's being rebellious to evil. That's what it is. They, the preachers talk about all the time about not being rebellious. Not being rebellious to God. Okay? So, not worshiping at the altar of Satan is not rebellion to God. It's rebellion to Satan. We're supposed to put away evil things. We're supposed to step away from evil things, not give in to them. It just blows my mind. I I still hear it over and over again. Preachers are constantly saying, you have to give in to it. You have to go along with it. Go along to get along. I just unbelievable. It's the one way, it's the one pure true way to really know how how corrupt religion has made the Bible because the Bible says nothing about that. The Bible says nothing about submitting to it. Paul asked the Romans to submit because he was seeing them slaughtered one by one by one. He said, you need to stop. This is this is getting out of control. He was having his entire his entire flock were, were being killed because the Romans were going out and taking them out and slaughtering them. Anybody that even remotely said anything about it. Because at the time, it was just a little group. It was just a little group of people that were, you know, it wasn't growing. And they were going out and they were being directly rebellious to to the government. And the government was killing them. And Paul said, pull back. Pull back. This is not the way to do it. You know, just like a good strategist, it's not the way to do it. Paul prayed to God probably and God said pull them back you know sometimes you have to do that he never said anything about okay now for the rest of your lives I want every Christian everywhere to just give themselves up give themselves over to authority I'll tell you what over the past 2,000 years if that's the teaching we should have been learning if that's the way we should have been doing this this world would be a lot more evil than it is But it's not. It's because people have stood up for what they believed in, for their faith, 
for their love of God for the past, I don't know how many years, we still don't know the true timeline, but it's because they decided to stand up for what God told them to do, to not just give in to evil tyrants, that we are here. And I can't say anything about the Crusades, and I can't say it because those were completely different things. I am talking about... I am talking about whatever made America a country. Whatever it was that made America a country, whether it was whether it was the Israelites fleeing from Africa to come over here to create a new country, or whether it was the founding fathers, if you want to believe that story. I don't know. It's either way. Somebody was rebellious against their kings to where they ran away or they fought for what they believed in. And we have the freedom to be able to talk about these things right now because of it. They didn't just give in. So, what do you want to believe? (sighs) Doesn't mean we have to go out and completely burn down the cities. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is, you need to stop just going along with it to get along. There's nothing in God's word that tells us that we have to just let it go. That we just have to just submit unless God tells us to submit. If God tells you to submit, then you submit. You know, go go do what God tells you to do. If thousands upon thousands of people are being told, told that, that's fine. That's them. Those that are being told by God not to submit to this, to be prepared to fight for what they believe in, don't stand in their way. Definitely don't stand in their way because the those that are going to be told that they're going to have to fight, that they're going to have to stand up, that it's going to have to get ugly before it gets better, the ones that are going to have to lose their lives in order to be able to make sure that you have some kind of truth and freedom, don't stand in their way. You better move out of their way. Because that's what God's telling them to do. So what's it going to be? You know? What? I don't know, man. I... It's frustrating. It's really frustrating. Especially after this weekend. And we will get into that. <laughs> His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed. He has he hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. And some people will 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 hear that. Those that have, you know, been been stuck in their ways for a while. Those that are uh, you know grew up in Christianity and and were taught these things and, and I was right there. I went to Sunday school whenever I was a kid and we talked about that before. Um, I was not raised in a religious environment. I was not raised in a church. I was not, you know, raised with any of this stuff. Um, But I was told at a very young age what these things were. You know, how to... How to be submissive, man. Just... God's got your back. Just let this stuff happen. (laughs) It's like, what? I uh, again, I understand. I absolutely understand. When it comes that time, whatever I'm going to have to do to protect myself and protect my family, if God tells me that I'm going to have to put my guns down and I'm going to have to just let it happen, then that's what's going to happen. As of right now, though, we need to be fighting for what we have. We need to be fighting for our beliefs, our rights. We need to be fighting for the truth. Right now, right now, lies are winning because no one is standing up for the truth. And the people that are standing up for the truth are being so submissive to it 
you know, they want to stand up and say, oh, you know, the government's doing this, government's doing that, people are doing this, people are doing that. But at the same time, they're turning around and saying, oh, but you have to just go along with this. Don't worry about worried about that. It's like, what? Come on. Come on, man. Pick a side. Seriously, just pick a side already, okay? You're, you're either going to say, uh, you're either going to say that you're going to you're going to speak out against the truth about everything and you're actually going to fight and do something for it, or you're going to speak out against the truth or you're going to speak out against the truth and and you're going to just do nothing. It's just going to be like, uh, you know, Oh, there's lies in the world, but if we just sit here and wait, it'll be okay. (laughs) No, it's not. It's just steamrolling. It just keeps going and going and going, and it's your indifference that's that's causing it to come. It's it's your indifference to it. It was my indifference to it whenever I was younger. Of course, then again, it was also uh, it was also my ignorance of things. You know, when I was younger, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know these things existed. I didn't know that there was a grand global conspiracy to kill everyone i didn't know this i didn't know that there were billionaires out there that you know wanted to ethnically cleanse the world i didn't know that but but it's out there it's real it's a thing you know it's been out there for a while and everything that we know about this world is something that they gave to us it's it's part of their control system. That's messed up. That's really really messed up. We know nothing. We we know absolutely nothing about anything. Uh, we we've been fed lies lies our entire life, and and we're we're trapped in this we're trapped in this pit of lies, and they just keep putting lies and lies and lies on top of us, and. Somewhere along the line, the truth won. Good won. Good people won. You know? Because we wouldn't be where we are if it had just constantly been the lies. We wouldn't. We wouldn't be where we are right now. Somewhere along the line, the truth won out. Somebody stood up and fought for it. So, why can we not do that again? Do we have to let it get to a certain point before somebody stops and says, "Oh, hey, wait, let's let's fight to keep our sanity." And I'm not I'm not trying to fight for what we had before. I'm not. We're we're not getting what we had before. Who wants that back anyways, you know? I, that was just I I don't want to have you know these evil ringleaders of the world that are telling us all of these lies and and nonsense. I don't want to have a fake monetary system. I don't want to be taxed off of my hand. I don't want that. I don't want that at all. You know, you're going to have to fight for your freedom at this point. You're going to have to fight to get it back. And then we have to create a better system. We can't, we can't have the system we had before because the system we had before was being manipulated into what they want and now we're kind of in this place where you know we're stuck we've been on the back foot for a while now it's now it's unfortunately been a matter of people that have been on the back foot for so long are just giving up and it's because false teachers are going out and telling them to just give up and give in. And I saw it firsthand this weekend. Uh, Saturday, we were invited by my wife's mother to go see uh, what was his name? Safardi, Amir Safardi, I think is his name. I don't know. One of these, one of these internet preacher guys or internet. He's not even a preacher. He's not a preacher. He's just a, he's, you know what he is? 
three things really tipped me off on who this guy was whenever we uh, whenever we went to see him because I didn't know who he was. I thought he was an actual preacher, but it's not. He was a guy that claims that that Christ changed him. He was born a uh, he was born a Jewish. Claims that he was changed by Christ and became a CEO of some multi-million dollar corporation, um, became some Israeli liaison um, to where he was able to... I don't know how to put this. I guess he had gotten to the point to where he was he was able to be with the big wigs, talk with the big wigs, you know, be put up on those pedestals where none of us little people get to see. Um, and then out of the blue, he starts doing, he starts doing Bible prophecy books and, you know, starts doing, um, lectures and all this other kind of stuff, you know, goes out on tour with all this. It's just like, I'm going to leave this, uh, I'm, I'm going to leave this, this, you know, multi-million dollar CEO job that I had with all these millions of dollars. I'm already rich. I might as well just go out and start talking about, talking about what I believe that the Bible tells me. <sighs> so... This multi-million dollar setup that they had. <laughs> we had to drive out to Cincinnati, Ohio to be able to go see this. And uh, it was a you know pretty big banquet hall. Um, like I said, multi-million dollar setup. And it was, you know, they had the they had the really nice screens and the, you know, the the concert festival um, lighting and the you know the speakers and all that stuff and and it was exactly what I would think what I would have thought that prosperity gospel believing preachers or or prosperity believing gospel people would want to have out of something like that it's where everybody was kind of all, you know, nice and snazzed up. And it was a really nice place. And and uh, it was all flashing lights. And they had the mood lighting. And they, you know, they came out. We, we didn't, we weren't there for the whole thing. It started at like 9. We got there at like 11. Um, no, we got there right at lunch. $15 boxed lunches. That was that was the part that killed me. Fifteen dollar box lunches, and all it was was like a turkey or ham sandwich, and a bag of chips, and a cookie. So you pay fifteen dollars for that? Are you kidding me? What the hell? Didn't even get a drink with it. Either. You had to buy the drink separate. It's like two dollars for a can of Coke. Um. But yeah, it was uh, it was exactly what you would think of that over the top kind of you know what in the world is this? This can't be real kind of things. And, uh, they had this, this band come out and they, they sing, they sang the feel good songs. You know, I, I still have a problem with Christian music. I still do. I know people, people, if they want to listen to Christian music, that's, that's on you. And if you can get, if you can feel the power of that music so much to the point that you have to stand up and hold your hands up and, you know, sway back and forth and do all the stuff if that empowers you, then that is definitely on you. I cannot, I cannot follow into that. There, there has been, there have been several religious songs that people have made that I have heard that really, really have inspired me. But when you take the big stuff, um, the one they were singing is, uh, the, the one I've heard like a million times, our God is a, you know, whatever. I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, and I was just like, 
Man, if that empowers you, go for it. You know, I'm I'm not gonna stop you from that. I'm not gonna do that. I I I don't. That's not me. I can't get into that. That's you know. And I don't know why. I don't know why it. I don't know why it doesn't do that. I'm just not at that point. You know, sing praises to our God. Yeah, sure, I will. I'm just not gonna sing those songs because. There's just something about them that just seems a little off, and I'm still trying to figure out what it is. But if they empower you, if if they're good for you, then by all means, feel free. I'm just I I have again I have heard other songs that are far better. Uh, the best things that I have heard, the best religious songs that I have heard, are the guys that will take the Psalms, or will take uh, specific verses, and will sing them in the uh, original Hebrew and they are beautiful and they are amazing but you know as far as like the as far as the socially known <laughs> you know the the songs that everybody that everybody supposedly knows I, I I don't know. There's something there's something to it that I'm missing apparently. Uh, but anyways, they got up there and you know the the whole thing. The only black man in the entire the entire building um, was the singer for this band. <laughs> uh, which I thought was I mean I thought it was hilarious. You know. Because again, I I am still under the impression that the Native Americans, true Native Americans of this of this country of America, were were black, you know. But to to be in a room with so many white people, it's like, oh my god, <laughs> it's just one of those things where you just. You don't really feel out of place because it's like, oh, look, everybody's the same as me. Yeah, sure, but they're all rich, white. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, is, did, is there no black person whatsoever that believes in God anymore? I mean, they do. They're just following their own churches. But it was just, you know, he got up there and it was... And I'm looking at him, I'm like, that's the only black guy I've seen in this whole place. What in the world's going on here? Um, <laughs> But, you know, they went through that, and like I said, they had the mood lighting. You know, they had the mood lighting, and they had the, the nice, you know, the music going. And, and, and I was like, this is... This is that kind of supposed to be empowering kind of stuff that you know, anybody that doesn't see past the symbolism of it will never believe or will, will absolutely believe. Let's put it that way. You know, the ones that'll fall for it. And I just like, uh, whatever. So anyways, this guy comes on, he has this whole video package, you know, where he's talking about his past and all this stuff. Then he comes out and he starts speaking and he's one of those guys that are, you know, goofy he won't talk to you straight he'll, he'll make a joke about everything and he does the one thing that that pastors do that I, or preachers do that i can't stand is that he will say what does it say in the bible does it say yada 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 and he'll he'll take the one thing and he'll change it to where you know it's the exact opposite and he'll say no it doesn't say that it says yada yada it's like dude just come correct man don't don't add to the book. Don't add or take away from the book. Just tell it straight. Don't make a joke about it. But that's what he was. He was he was one of those guys that made a joke about it. To didn't tell me a damn thing that I didn't already know. Um, said that his new book was about uh, talking about revelations, but didn't really talk about revelations at all. <laughs> there was no substance. Absolutely no substance whatsoever. Uh, but it wasn't until the, the very end of it where he was kind of... He was talking about people that are getting up in arms with each other. 
about masks and the shots and all the other kind of stuff. He's like, everybody wants to be talking about this, talking about that. Just don't worry about it, you know? And I'm like, what? And then he's he he starts going into the Mark of the Beast. And he says, you don't know if this is the Mark of the Beast or not. You know, don't worry. I mean, he never actually said the word vaccine. He never actually said the word. Because he, I think if he would have said it, he would have probably put somebody off, but he hinted around it as much as possible. Maybe it was because they were they were putting this on the internet. I don't know, and they didn't want to get a you know get a strike or whatever. I I don't know, but he kept he kept teasing around it, and it got to the point to where I was like, dude, I get what you're trying to say. You're trying to tell these people that they need to go ahead and take the shot. Because it's not going to do anything to him. And I'm like, don't, 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 just don't, just don't do that. Stop. I almost walked out. I really did. I, I had a feeling whenever we went there that, that I was going to have to make the decision whether I was going to walk out or not. But I was like, no, I'm going to keep soldiering through this to see what else he says. That way I can, you know, if I got to pull something out of it, I can pull something out of it. But, uh, <laughs> He rationalized one of the reasons for getting the shot by saying that, you know, people want to talk about microchips. You know, they want to talk about microchipping in Sweden, how Sweden's got this new app that, you know, they're talking about having microchips and tracking if you've got the shot or not. And then he said, well, look, back in 2018, Sweden was already talking about having microchips. And he had these two articles side by side. And I was like, yeah, and both of those have the number of the beast. I was I was like, you don't know. You're telling these people not to worry about this kind of stuff because you yourself are ignorant to the fact that these things all carry the number of the beast. He He was saying, he kept saying, you know, this is not going to be the mark of the beast. This is not going to be this. This is not going to be that because the beast has not revealed himself. How do you know that? How do you know that? You don't know that. Your history is only 200 years old. How do you know the beast has not revealed himself? Because if we are supposed to be looking for the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast is going to be carrying the number of his name. That is 666. If the mark, if the, if the mark of the beast is supposed to be carrying the number of, of his name, then Everything that carries 666 on it should be suspect. And everything that has come out within the past almost 20 years now that has slowly built up to the shots, that has slowly built up to the microchips, that has slowly built up to this monetary system, this new monetary system that they're trying to put into place, this whole thing carries that number. I've talked about the, the, the RFID chips, the market chips. I've talked about money within itself. I've talked about the new patents for being able to mine cryptocurrency out of, out of your body. You know, everything. We, we've, we've talked about the, the, the name of COVID itself. Every single thing, every single bit of it carries the number. So if it carries the number, then it should be suspect. Oh, but we haven't seen certain things yet. No, you haven't seen certain things yet. That does not mean that these things have not appeared yet. Somebody said, well, we haven't seen the two witnesses yet. Not not anybody you know, from this conference, but before I've heard so many people say, well, we're supposed to see the two witnesses before we see anything else. It's like, maybe the two witnesses have already come and gone. Maybe you're in that, you know, season of Satan before everything falls apart. Your timeline is going to be different than God's timeline. We don't know. We just don't know. If I'm wrong, I already, I was telling my wife this. I said, if I'm wrong about this kind of stuff, then I'm going to have to deal with this with God whenever I get there. You know, until that point though, we, we don't know. We don't know what the timeline is. We don't know if these things have come. We don't know how much of that has been kept from us because everything we know is a lie 
because there, there's, you know, it. every time you look into the past, you find something that contradicts what people say. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, you know, and then we have some future stuff that we have to, to worry about, and that's fine. But you cannot go out there and say, you know, it's okay to go ahead and take this, take this chip or take this whatever because it doesn't have anything to do with the mark of the beast because we have not seen specific things happen. So just because you haven't seen specific things happen, that doesn't mean that this world has not seen these specific things come about. You just don't know this. So, you know, I was immediately turned off by this guy. Um, he, he gave me... I said, you know, I could probably, I could probably follow maybe sixty percent of what this guy was saying because he was talking about some things. Um, he's um, he wanted to, he wanted to drop some, you know, right wing nonsense about stuff and and um, you know, it, it's always it, it's a. It's an easy pop to to be able to bash Biden. So whatever, you know. You wanna you wanna go that route, go that route. I don't care. <laughs> you know, you wanna get uh you wanna get an easy pop, you do that. You know, that's fine. But everything else just there was no substance. No substance at all. And to have him sit there and tell... I'm, I'm sure that everybody in there probably already had their shots anyways because they've been told since the very beginning of this whole thing that, oh, it's okay, it's safe, it's fine. And I'm just like, come on, man. Come on. Oh, I got to do training today. Yes, I know. I got to do training. Whatever. That's my, my supervisor is telling me. Even though, even though it's not due for another seven days, I gotta do it. <laughs> Whatever, man. Um, but that was that was what we did. That was what we did. It was like an hour's worth of nothing, yeah, and I kind of figured it was. Uh, we were told to go out there um, because her mom had said, "This is a guy that believes that we should be." that we should be following the Passover. And I thought that's what he was going to be talking about. You know, I thought he was going to be doing some, you know, I thought he was going to be kind of off the cuff. I didn't think that he was going to be talking about, you know, Bible prophecy or anything, especially Bible prophecy that really had nothing to do with anything. But I, I really thought for sure that we were going to get something maybe moderately educational out of this. But no, no, he didn't give us anything. And uh, just the whole time, I'm just like, why is this millionaire attempting to tell me that he thinks he knows more than I do? You know, it's the whole time I'm just sitting there thinking, why am I even worried about this? So that was our weekend. That was the only thing that I really got out of that. And I'm sitting there the entire time that he's talking about Bible verses, looking through my phone, because I didn't bring my Bible with me. I should have. But um, I was checking his, I was checking his words. Because anybody can throw a Bible verse up on the, up on the screen and it would say, you know, such and such and such. But unless you see it for yourself, Unless you, unless you find it for yourself, they could be lying to you. They could very easily cut out a word here, cut out a word there. And everything he was quoting from was like the, the new King James. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, but I'm sitting there reading it along with him to make sure. Because I was like, I don't trust you, man. I really don't trust you. I don't know you. I don't trust you. I don't, uh, I'm not going to say everything you're saying is wrong. Um, except for maybe the, you know, the things about the shots, but, um, 
I definitely want to prove it for myself. So I'm sitting there flipping through it. And the one thing that he gave me, or the one thing that he gave us, was, uh, let me see if I can get it here. Second Corinthians. Come on now, what is this? Second Corinthians. Why am? Why is this a? Why is this a video? What? Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians four. And it goes along with just about everything else that I talk about. Um, as far as, you know, the, uh, the father will keep the truth from them that want it because they would, they would rather, they would rather walk in their own, they would rather walk in their lies. They would rather believe the lie than, than hear the truth of the father. So... Let's see here. Um, 2 Corinthians 4, and it's 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. And I said, that's another one right there. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid, it is hid to those to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the men, blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of God Christ, the light, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, should shine into them. It is Satan. Satan, the God of this world, and to, in whom the God of this world, in, in whom Satan has blinded the minds of those which believe, which do not believe, lest the light of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And that was the only thing I pulled from that entire conference. <laughs> it was just that it was like a, you know, it's like there's just another one of those lines, you know. Outside of that, man, again, it, it it's the, oh, God, I got a lot of work today. Damn it. It's the, um, giving yourself over to giving yourself over to authority stuff that it was the the main crux of what he was saying he was like don't worry about this don't worry about that god has you all you have to do is you know just keep going and there was it it goes back to um the document, I cannot remember where it was, I'd have to go dig it up, where it was talking about the government trying to convince preachers and pastors to, it was trying to, to tell them to convince their congregations um, that they need to submit themselves to the role of authority whenever it comes time. That was part of the whole uh, 501c thing. Um, well, 501c3c, uh, c3, 3c, 501c3c. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Which within itself is a 501, which is May Day, which is the beginning of their, you know, rituals, their summer rituals, and the c3 is a 33. So it's a 501c3. It's a demonic number. Um, it's not really a demonic number so much as it is a number that they have changed to, 
you know, fit their own agendas. But it within itself is, you know, just another thing, just another thing. And, um, but it's part of that where, you know, the government gets to come in and say, you know, try to tell your, try to tell your, your people that, you know, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be trying to do this and do that. They should just follow orders, you know? And then there was a document that came out right at the beginning of 2020 where they were sending it out to churches and they were telling, they were telling uh, pastors to, you know, stay away, stay away from church. Um, get the shots whenever it comes around, you know, things like that. And it was, I don't remember where that was. It was one of those things that it was just like a, it was just like a paper or something. It just came around, you know, and, and somebody, somebody uploaded it and then it disappeared and then it got fact checked. <laughs> it got fact checked and then it got, and then it got disappeared. And then it came up like, uh, whenever the shots started really coming around again and, you know, came back up and everybody was like, see, it's coming back around again. And, um, everybody was just, you know, it was like, look, they're pushing this. They're really pushing this. And it was one of those things where you just kind of stopped and said, man, that's, they're going to do it. They're going to do anything possible. They're, they're going to tear us down in any and every way possible that they can. And they're going to use the churches to do it because the churches, the people inside of the churches have believed for the longest time now that they are just supposed to be subjected to whatever because the lies of, of churchianity have, have made it that way. And there's nothing in the Bible that says that you have to submit straight away. There's nothing that says that you have to, you have to admit or submit straight away to, to the forces of darkness. You stand up to them. You stand up to them and you fight for your rights. Uh, Anyways, so that was Saturday, and then yesterday we had uh, we had family over. Um, we had uh, we had our granddaughter Saturday night and Sunday morning. Um, didn't really get to see her too much Saturday night, but she got to wake up Sunday morning, and she immediately came into our bedroom. She's like, "Mama, Papa, wake up!" <laughs> I was like, "Oh God." <laughs> Like, man, I'm tired, baby. It's like six o'clock in the morning too. Six o'clock in the morning and you got a baby trying to wake you up. It's just too good. She's she's too good. She's too cute. I love the hell out of her. She said, Come on, Peppa, wake up. Wake up. And I actually got to go back to sleep for a little bit. I think I only got an hour after that. And then she kind of snuck back up into my bedroom. And uh, she was sitting at the at the the foot of the bed she said wake up Peppa wake up she climbing on the bed and pushing me telling me to wake up she's rotten I love the hell out of her man so that was it was a good weekend you know I mean that other than other than going to that conference which whatever <laughs> you know we got we got to go for free. I don't know how much they paid for those tickets, and I'm almost like, dude, you guys should have got your money back for that. That was yikes. But yeah, just one of those things. Just one of those guys. It's just. It's like I said. It's like who who said that you could let multimillionaires tell you what they think they know about the Bible. Not only that, but this guy was, this guy apparently had ties with upper officials in Israel. What? Who? Just the whole thing stank from top to bottom. Just enough to make me just want to stop and just be like, what the heck is this? What What the heck is this? Why should I be listening to you? Why it's, you know, you have no... Other than, other than you, you have, 
your face out on the internet and you have some books underneath your belt, why should I even remotely be listening to you when you aren't really preaching the full... And it was... The first thing I said whenever we got out of there, because we left before the Q&A and, you know, the first thing I said as soon as we got in the car was like, man, soft words to tickle your ears. <laughs> My wife was like, really? I said, yeah, that's all that was. Just soft words to tickle people's ears. That they, they, Those people inside of there, they just had no idea. They They really didn't. And they're just going to they follow that kind of stuff. <sighs> It's crazy. All right. I'm going to go to work. So, uh, I'm going to go to work. My, my wife is off cause she's off for president's day. I, I still don't understand how some people can get off and some people don't, but whatever. So while I'm here working, you, you, uh, people have a good day. Um, God bless everyone. I will uh, talk to you guys later. I didn't even get to tell you about being flooded out of the house, but we'll uh, we didn't get flooded out of the house. We just got I got flooded out of my basement. That was on Thursday. That's why I didn't post on Friday. If I remember tomorrow, I'll talk about it, but probably not. So, um, other than that, you guys take it easy, and I will see you later. Bye.